Hey there, Disney Glam Fam, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jossum, AKA Awesome Jossum, and I wanna thank you for clicking on this video. On this channel, we like to celebrate Disney, beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. So if you like any, or all of those things, consider bippity boppity bopping that subscribe button, ring the bells of notification so you're instantaneously notified when I post something new, and please leave a big old thumbs up at the end of this video if you liked it all the way through. Now today, if you couldn't tell by the title, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how to create your very own Sisu inspired ears. Now Sisu is an amazing fictional dragon character from the newest film, Raya and the Last Dragon. I had the opportunity of seeing that movie in theaters and let me tell you, it was phenomenal. So I knew I fell in love with Sisu. Her character is hilarious. Her color story is absolutely beautiful. I wanted to create some ears that coordinated to that movie and that character in specific. So today, follow along as I share with you guys step-by-step -step how to create your very own Sisu inspired ears. All right, my friends, these are gonna be all of the items you need to create your very own Sisu inspired ears. Some purple glittery foam board, some blue fabric, any of your choosing, cardboard disc cutouts to be the framing for your ears. You're gonna need your favorite style headband, some modeling dry clay. You're gonna need, of course, the utensils you need to create any sort of ear, glue gun, glue sticks, scissors. You're gonna need some teal paint, a paintbrush, you're also gonna need a pack of sequins, and last but not least, some colorful pastel fur. I also forgot to showcase some polyfill filling. Now, I'm also excited because these are ears that I created for my very special friend, Syria. Enjoy! So first up, you're gonna wanna create your centerpiece for the bow. I'm using this Modeling Magic Clay. I like this clay because it instantly dries overnight. You don't have to bake it. It's very easy to work with. If you make a mistake, you can easily uh, mush it all back together and then recreate your project. So as you can see, I'm kneading the dough and just trying to create uniformity. And what I'm doing now is separating it out into two uh, pieces of the clay. One will be a little bit smaller, the other one will be slightly larger, and I'm just going to roll it and start shaping it into a cone slash horn form. Now you're gonna wanna use a reference photo so you can kind of uh, replicate the horn that Sisu has on her head. Um, obviously you saw earlier in the video the ears. I use the horn as the centerpiece of the bow and I make the bow out of a pastel fur. Again, um, all I'm doing is shaping and using a guided picture to replicate the horn on her head. So I'm creating the smaller horn and the larger horn, layering them together and just creating a nice seamless backing so that way it can be glued flat. All right, so once you've created your clay and set it off to dry, it's time to create your ears. So taking your cardboard circle cutouts and your blue fabric, go ahead and cut a piece of fabric around each piece of cardboard. You're gonna wanna make sure that you leave about an inch around the cardboard as your template. So that way, when you create your ears, you have enough fabric to glue on the cardboard and create the pockets for the plush. Um, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you continue watching, you'll see exactly what I mean. To ensure that your ears sit flat against your headband, go ahead and take a circle object and use that as a template to create a small cutout at the base of your circle. Again, you're gonna want to create a small enough uh, cutout, that way your ears will sit flat against the headband. Just continue watching to see what I mean.
Once you have your cardboard framing cut, go ahead and take the glue and start to glue your fabric around the perimeter of your cardboard. You're gonna wanna make sure that you pull this nice and tight, but also leave enough room that when you fill it with the polyfill, it does create a nice plush look. Also, make sure that when you're gluing around your fabric, um, don't glue the part that will be along the side of the cutout. Continue watching to see what I mean. If you glue that down, you're actually not gonna be able to fill it with your polyfill. Once you have both of your ears created, it's time to stuff them with polyfill. So I'm taking uh, this polyfill that I purchased at Hobby Lobby and I'm basically ripping it apart. You don't want it to be too lumpy. So I find that if you rip it apart and then stuff it, it actually creates a nice bubble or fill. Um, so just take your time with this. You want to make sure that you're pushing it all the way up against each of the corners. So that way it creates a nice rounded effect. You don't want to overfill this as well because if you overfill it you might bend your cardboard backing so just take your time with this be gentle and make sure you get it filled to your desired effect And here you're just seeing me close off the ear. So once I finished filling it with the polyfill, I'm taking that last flap of fabric and securing it along the back of the cardboard. This is gonna create your pillowed ear and it's going to look nice and plush. So going against the traditional ear, I decided to create a flat backing using this glittery purple foam board. I'm taking the template that I used to create my cardboard cutout, and I am using that to create a circle shape on the back of my glittery foam board. Now, um, I am going to create basically a flat back that replicates Sisu's like fins or scales or whatever you call those things that kind of come out of her back. Um, so I created the shape and then what I'm doing is I'm taking my pen and almost uh, creating a guideline of where I need to cut for those fins or scales. Just continue watching to see what I mean. And this is what it looks like when you finish tracing and cutting out your fin shape. So as you can see, the front part is the glittery piece of my foam and the back is a flat purple color. So I am going to mirror this with another piece of uh, foam. So I'm basically taking the cutout and using that as a template to trace. And I will be cutting a secondary piece and gluing them together sandwich style. So that way both sides are glittery purple.
Using your plush blue ear as a template, go ahead and align it on to the purple glittery foam and cut out the bottom part of the foam. Again, this is gonna sit nice and flush against your headband, so you wanna make sure that it sits evenly. Once you have your glittery foam pieces glued together, take your plush ear, line it up, and again, glue that on the top. This is in essence what your ear will look like from the front and the back. And we finally move into probably the most tedious part of this project, these scales. I decided I wanted to replicate dragon scales with sequins. So I picked up this pack of multicolored blue teal sequins and I decided to just go at it. So I'm taking a little bit of hot glue and focusing mostly along the perimeter of the ear. Uh, that's gonna be the part that kind of buddies up against the fins, those purple fins. And I'm just creating a soft gradient down um, about halfway with the sequence. And again, this is the most tedious part. Take your time with it. You can use E6000 if you want. I used hot glue just because it was easy. The only thing that I found tricky was working with such small pieces and the hot glue. You kept getting the glue webs as I call them or the little strings. So I was trying to be very meticulous to not leave those behind. And this is what it should look like once you're done with this sequence. So take your time doing the second ear so that way we can uh, finally attach everything to the headband. And once you're done with your ears, it's time to attach it to your headband. So off camera, I have lined my headband with the same fabric that I used for the ears and it's time to find your attaching places. So I like to keep about four inches in between my ears. That way there's enough room for a plush style bow. Um, and what I'm doing is using a nice generous amount of hot glue to attach my ear to the headband. So I'm finding a nice middle ground to where I would like it, using enough glue on the plush part of the ear and firmly attaching it to the headband. You wanna make sure you take your time with this step so it doesn't look sloppy. Make sure you don't have glue spilling everywhere and make sure that you hold your ears firm and straight. Now we're moving into my favorite part of this, the majestic mane bow. So I am using, of course, Sisu's mane as inspiration for the bow. I found this awesome pastel fabric at Hobby Lobby, and it is, of course, a nice pastel fur. So once you open it up, you can see it does have a gradient in colors. I'm actually gonna be trimming off the yellow and the green color, so that way I just use the blue, pink, and purple part um, to replicate the colors of Sisu.
Once you are able to cut off the colors that you don't need, uh, it's time to create the bow shape. I'm sorry I kind of went out of frame for this. I was very much into the project and I kind of pulled it out of frame. But basically, I am gluing the fabric over onto itself to create the bow. So you're going to want to fold it into three with both of the ends meeting in the middle on the back. And that way you can get a nice uh, fur lining around the entire bow. Um, once you get that, you're going to create the bow shape and use some hot glue to tack the middle pieces together so it can fan out towards the end. Um, I, I know I have another tutorial with the Cruella inspired ears that I'll link up above showcasing how I create the bow. I did the same exact steps for this and then I am attaching both of them together in the middle so that way it can look like a bow. I decided to use a piece of fur to wrap around the center of the bow just to make it look nice and clean. And once you got your bow set, it's time to attach it to your headband. So using a nice uh, dollop of hot glue, add that to the center of your headband and securely press and hold your bow into place. Make sure that you don't have any fur caught underneath. Um, you wanna make sure that it looks as clean and as neat as you possibly can. You think I would have this recording thing down by now? Nope, still don't. I'm so sorry guys, my camera cut out as I was filming the last part of this video, but these are the finished ears. So basically, the um, clay piece that we created earlier in the video, I just took some paint to it, painted it, added a few tribal markings or so to say, and I attached it right into the center of the bow. But this is the final product. These are the final ears. I had so much fun putting these together. I find that they're very whimsical and fun. I love the embellished sequins. It just gives like that nice sparkling element. It kind of reflects like dragon scales. And of course her furry mane like this was just so much fun to put together. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section below. Have you seen Raya and the Last Dragon? And are you a fan of the film? As always, friends, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Stay beautiful, but most importantly, have a magical day. Bye. <laughs>